I, I just want to say before we get started, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're a small organization that is, we're really trying to change the world using Splunk. So, you know, thanks for, thanks for coming and showing some support. Two in every three adults in the U.S. have issues with chronic illness. Issues that don't wait to happen during a visit with your family doctor. At AccuHealth, we provide sensors that track possible complications. Our virtual hospital staff monitors this data to proactively contact patients and caregivers to stop problems before they worsen. In other words, we're here to help keep you healthy. To learn more about how you can increase your quality of life and reduce your cost of care for just $9 a month, ask your doctor or visit us here on the web. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is, my name is Steven Sampson. Uh, my background is actually cybersecurity. I've been a cybersecurity expert for 18 years. I've worked for some of the largest companies uh, in the world doing managed cyber uh, services. So I build security operation centers. Uh, one day I decided that I, that wasn't fulfilling enough, so I wanted to make a change. And I got, out of, I got out of cybersecurity and I decided that I was going to get into remote patient monitoring. And when I started looking at the business of remote patient monitoring, there's a lot of companies out there that are trying to do it, but they don't fully understand how managed services work. So from a, being able to provide, ingest data and be able to uh, provide the results to the people that need it. So we thought that we could do it better and we, we decided to build our RPM tool on Splunk and we're gonna go over that today. Hey everybody, I'm Shelby Neal. I'm the VP of Information Technology at AccuHealth. Uh, and thank you for choosing to come to our session. I know there are plenty to choose from, all very interesting. My professional career started after I graduated from Texas A&M, and I started off as a cybersecurity consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers, where I met Steve, and I learned all about how to set up and manage a securities operations center using Splunk. As time went on, I found myself at a different firm, Accenture, where I was actually starting to specialize in something a little bit different, industrial control system security. When I got a call out of the blue from Steve, and he said, hey, I have this really innovative idea. Why don't we use Splunk in order to build out a health operations center instead of a securities operations center? Obviously, I thought that sounded kind of cool, so I jumped ship from Accenture and joined AccuHealth where we actually change and impact the lives of our patients with our telemonitoring services. But I'll let Steve get into that. Thank you, Shelby. Does that work? So what is telemonitoring? Does anybody know what telemonitoring is in the, in the room? Show of hands. Okay, awesome, a few people. So what telemonitoring is, it's no different than than cybersecurity or network operation center monitoring. What we do is we take data from medical devices, we ingest it into Splunk, and we offer a, a managed service around that. So instead of it being firewall data, we, we take in blood glucose data, we take in blood pressure data, we take in weight. We ingest it into Splunk, and we provide a managed service around that that is instead of being staffed by cybersecurity professionals, it's being staffed by clinicians. We in a way, provide more of a security blanket for patients. So when a reading comes in, we action it, and we call the patient. And the whole goal is to keep the patient healthy, out of the emergency room, and in the care of their primary care provider or their uh, specialty doctor. So AccuHealth, I've talked about it a little bit uh, just a minute ago, but AccuHealth, we're a group of technologists that really wanted to, to change the world. So we took our, we took our cybersecurity experience and we took a what traditionally was a, for us for me at least was a security event event management product and turned it into a healthcare event management product instead of having managed uh, cyber services we provide clinicians all over top of it and that's where Evelyn was born so Evelyn is our is our code name for what we our remote patient monitoring platform but the, at the nucleus of it is Splunk so Going into a little bit of the market of telemonitoring and, and why it's important to everybody today. There's three, there's essentially three problems. So patients today, actually if you look to your right and you look to your left, one of you will de develop hypertension. If you don't have hypertension today, it, it, it will happen. And so what patients are doing is they, they're recording their data 
and they're bringing it into their patient, into their doctors, and their doctors are essentially having to review it in a in a very short amount of time, and it's being and they're reactive because they're saying you have hypertension, I'm going to give you blood pressure blood pressure medication to lower your blood pressure, but they don't know if you have white coat syndrome where you get nervous when you go in, and they don't really know what what uh, if you're actually writing down your readings properly when you're recording it. So patients want a way that they can engage with their doctors when they're away from them. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is physicians, there's a lot of physicians that are retiring. There's actually more physicians retiring than doctors that are replacing them. So that's putting a strain on our healthcare, which meaning that physicians have to see more patients or the patients go to the emergency room. So how do physicians see more patients and be more engaged and provide better care? And the third problem is with the payer. As the baby boomer age or age group continually gets older, they're putting more of a strain on our healthcare, our healthcare services just in general. And if they, get, if they can't go to their doctors, they go to the emergency room. And every time someone goes to the emergency room, that's a five to $21,000 bill that's going to the insurance company. So whether that's Medicare, your private insurance or anything, that, that's a bill that ultimately we all have to pay for. So the payers want to get to a point where they're providing more services in a proactive way, making sure people are complying with their, essentially their chronic illnesses so they, they, they stay out of the emergency room and connect them to the doctor. And we see telemonitoring solving all three of those problems because we collect the, the readings directly from the patients at home, we allow physicians to provide proactive care to their patients, and we're lowering healthcare costs for everyone that's involved. So how does telemonitoring work? How do we do it? So well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we give a device to the patients and they take it home. They take their readings just like you would take a blood pressure reading at home. Uh, or if, if you're diabetic, taking your diabetic reading or even uh, just taking a weight scale. When you take your, your readings, it automatically gets transferred into our platform. We ingest it. So we see a lot of success with cellular enabled devices, so that's what we prefer to use, but we also ingest it over Bluetooth devices if it is connected to their phone. We ingest that data, and when that data comes in, based on the patients, we have thresholds. If it is high, too high or too low, that creates an alert. No different than it would if you're in a security operation center. And we action those alert with, with our clinicians. We call the patient, we ask them, are you feeling okay? If they're not feeling okay or if they're having some issues, we address those and the whole the whole point of that is to keep to engage with their doctor. And if we have to call 911, we call 911. But ultimately, 98% of these issues can be solved at the PCP or specialty level. The ultimate goal at the end of that is a healthier patient, a, a doctor that's more engaged and providing just better care. So I'm going to let Shelby get into the nuts and bolts of the Evelyn architecture, and we'll circle back uh, in a little bit. Thanks, Steve. And now that we kind of have an idea of what telemonitoring is, let's get into how we actually go about doing this. So the first step was figuring out how we were gonna set up our Splunk environment. And for me and Steve, we're both former consultants. We don't like reinventing the wheel. You can call it laziness, I call it efficiency. And we found that CloudFormation actually has a template for setting up Splunk Enterprise within AWS. So all we had to do was answer a few questions and it does all the heavy lifting and hard work for us when it came to the actual deployment. Now, when we were answering those questions, we made sure that the environment that it would set up for us would be what we wanted it to be. So to us, we knew that availability was of the utmost importance. We never know when a reading is gonna come in and we don't know when our users are gonna be logging in to review those readings. So we made sure that our environment includes multiple search heads, multiple indexers, all in a cluster with the load balancer to manage it all. And with that basic architecture set up, we then had to tackle how are we gonna actually get those patient readings from those medical IoT devices into Splunk. And AWS had a solution for that as well. So we simply take those devices and we either configure the device itself or the API of the device to send those patient readings to our API gateways, which have a corresponding Lambda that converts the data into whatever format we need it and sends it on to our Splunk HTTP event connectors. From then on, that medical data is just like a security log would be treated in Splunk. Now, of course, it is medical data, so we wanted to make sure that we tackled authorization and authentication. For us, we don't wanna be identity managers, so we integrated with one login. 
They're a well-known provider. They offer SAML, single sign-on, social sign-ons, multi-factor authentication. Once we had that integration down and we knew that we weren't gonna have to manage those passwords, we also looked at OneLogin's ability to set up profiles. You see, we have different kinds of users and they need to be able to see different data in different formats. And so OneLogin allows us to have these profiles built into the individual accounts. So regardless of who you are to us as a user, an AccuHealth Health Operations Center's nurse, one of our client physicians, a loved one to a patient, or the patient themselves, you're assigned a profile within OneLogin so that when you attempt to authenticate, you only get to see the data and reports that you should. But that's still just data at this point. We have to actually go about building those reports. And we do that through data models. When the information first comes into Splunk, it's somewhat structured, but it's not tagged to any specific patient. It doesn't have corresponding information. So the first thing that we have to do is use data models to tag the readings that come in to a specific patient. We do this through the unique device ID of the device, along with our unique patient IDs. And then we asked ourselves a series of questions to build out these reports. Okay, so a reading has come in, and first we need to see if it's critical or at risk or stable. So we compare it against the parameters for that specific patient, and if it's critical, then we tag it as such and mark it in red so that it very quickly draws your eye to it, just like stable would be green. There's also this concept of adherence. So patients have to take the readings in order for telemonitoring to be effective. We don't know what's going on with them if they don't take their readings, and we're not actually providing a service if they aren't. So we built out a report that actually tracks all of our patients' real-time adherence over a dynamic time range. So we can very quickly go in and see which patients are taking their readings, and then for those who aren't, we can call them and give that gentle reminder of, hey, slip on that BP cuff, hit the go button for us, let's just make sure you're healthy right now. There's also a concept of a service plan. You can think of this like a prescription, and every 60 days or so, a doctor has to re-prescribe it to make sure that it's still a viable service and that the patient still needs it. Makes sense? So we have another report that actually tracks these service plans and lets us know when they're coming up for renewal. And then it also includes the information for the specific doctor. That way, our health operations center staff can reach out to the doctors and make sure that there's no lapse in service and we get those service plans renewed in a timely manner. We essentially use these data models for the basis of everything in our platform, with the end goal being that our users can very quickly see the information that they need, do any sort of analysis that they might need to do, and then provide the best health recommendation to their patients. And all of this information, all of these abilities and fun things that we allow our users to do, mostly come in the form of integrations. Right, the most important being the medical devices. We've kind of talked quite a bit about that. Uh, what I haven't mentioned is that we're actually device agnostic. We're not looking to be a hardware provider. And so what we focus on is so long as a device is SIM enabled or has Bluetooth technology, then we will try and integrate with it. And so long as we can get those readings to come to us, we're comfortable with our patients using whatever devices they're comfortable with. It's one of those things that truly separates us from our competition. Very quickly in our operations, we notice just how often we're having to call the patients. Whether it is those gentle reminders of, hey, take your reading, please, or because a critical reading has come in and we need to make sure that they're okay. And what we noticed is that it's largely inefficient and also a little bit error prone to whip out the phone every time you need to call someone and type in that number. So we decided to go ahead and integrate with Amazon Connect. It's essentially a call center, and it allows our users to very quickly just click on the patient phone number from anywhere within our platform, and it actually initiates that phone call for them. There's no more whipping out the phone and typing in the numbers. And I know Steve had a couple of extra points he wanted to talk about with this integration. Yeah, we, uh, I'm really proud of this integration uh, with Amazon Connect. When I was working in a, it, when I was building security operation centers, one of the biggest issues was who do I call when something happens? Uh, if anyone here works in a knock or a sock, I'm sure that you have those issues, or right? you have to go to your run book, you have to look up who, who is responsible at that point in time and then call them, and then you have to log a ticket into this. 
what we've done here transcends what we've, for AccuHall, they can go in, it, it's applicable to security operations centers, network operations centers. Because we record and transcribe every single phone call, and when an event happens, whether it's a health alert or someone is compromising your network, you know who called what, when, and, and where, essentially. And you have that transcribed in, in your, your ticketing system. So we are exceptionally proud of this, and it's something that has helped us tremendously uh, provide better care. Thanks, Steve. And as we continue to grow and we got more of these client physicians onboarded, more patients onboarded, we started to really accept feedback from them. What, what did they want to see? What do they need in order to be able to provide those better health outcomes for their patients? And the first thing they told us about was telemedicine. Now you can imagine, you can go and get another telemedicine provider, but then you're introducing another software into your ecosystem, another user account that you have to remember. And so for us, we didn't necessarily want to create a whole new telemedicine platform. So what we did is we integrated with a well-known provider in Doxy. We use one login, single sign-on, so that our users don't have to have another account. They just click login, and so long as they've already authenticated to Evelyn, they're good to go. And then with an iframe solution, it's all built within side of Splunk. So all our users do is click in the navigation bar for telemedicine, and they're brought directly to their portal. Additionally, our doctors started to onboard more than the 10 or 20 patients, and so billing became quite cumbersome. You see, Texas Medicaid specifically has some very complex rules, and they differ between an organization like AccuHealth, a home health, and say the clinic's office. You have multiple CPT codes, and every week you're having to put in these reimbursement claims, right? So that's manageable when you only have the 10 or 20 patients, but when you start to get into the hundreds or thousands, that becomes quite a tedious and time-consuming task. And instead of throwing bodies at the problem, what we thought was, why don't we just automate it for them? So we went ahead and got AccuHealth registered as a submitter with Texas Medicaid, and then we built in a view within Splunk that allows our users to simply check or uncheck the qualified readings, hit submit, and that creates an input file that is used by our integration with Texas Medicaid to automatically process their claims. Now, other, other softwares and other companies have done this. A lot of electronic me medical records softwares do this, but they charge a fee. So unlike them, we don't charge our clients anything to use this feature. And I know Steve has a couple of other points to discuss too. Yeah, this is a, 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 this really defined us as a company when we, when we were able to do this integration. And the reason being is, as Shelby said, Texas Medicaid is very difficult to bill. Doctors don't have a lot of time. They don't have a lot of staff that have the ability or know-how to bill another CPT code. It, it, you know, for us, it's, it might be only one, but for that clinic, they probably have a thousand. So by doing this, what we've done is we've we become the only remote patient monitoring platform on the market that from the time a reading is taken on the patient's device, it is encrypted in transit into Splunk. It's not modified, can't be trans uh, modified, deleted uh, at any point, and then submitted into Texas Medicaid. So therefore, we're removing false billing, any errors that may be happening, and we're the only, we're the, are the only platform that can guarantee that to Texas Medicaid as well as the doctors. So it's it's... That's a pretty big, big thing for us. Thanks, Steve. And a lot of what we've talked about so far is after the reading has already come in, so largely recovering after an event has already occurred. But one thing that Steve and I are really passionate about is actually becoming more preventative as well, helping those patients avoid those health episodes to begin with. And so we've started to bring in data from Yahoo Weather. And our hope is to be able to correlate those upticks or downticks in the critical and at-risk readings with specific weather patterns. So if we notice that Tim tends to get a higher blood pressure or heart rate whenever a thunderstorm comes in, then we can call Tim before a thunderstorm comes in and maybe re-educate him on how to avoid getting the elevated blood pressure or heart rate. And more recently, we've started to work with doctors 
on how those actual in-office patient visits go. And what we found is that a lot of clinics already have their own EMR system, and then they're using our Evelyn software, which is built off of Splunk, and then they might have a couple of other applications as well. So as you can imagine, when you're meeting with this, this patient face to face and you're trying to get them in and out the door because nobody likes to be in a doctor's office and everybody just wants the answer of how they cannot be sick, they're having to jump through multiple softwares, right? Largely inefficient, it can be annoying, you, you don't know where the most up-to-date and most pertinent information is. And so we want to help get all of that information into one source, and that would be the physician's EMR, because that's what they go into whenever the patient is sitting in their office. So we've integrated with a few various EMRs, and what this means is the physicians don't have to log into Evelyn to see the patient readings or the reports that we generate. Instead, at a cadence that the physician sets, those readings and reports are automatically sent to the patient chart within the doctor's own EMR. There's no more jumping around, there's no more wasting time. It results in better health outcomes and all of the pertinent information in one place. And all of our want and ability to do these integrations and to really listen to the physicians that we work with and what would help them provide the best health for their patients has resulted in a really solid foundation of trust and has helped us build the relationship with the physicians that we work with. And we want to continue to build that trust. And what better way to do that than through making sure that the data we're entrusted with is secure. So we all know that PHI data is governed by HIPAA regulation. So we have to follow those sorts of controls. But we also go through regular SOC 2 and HIPAA audits in order to confirm those controls. It also gives us a chance to identify areas where we can stay well ahead of the curve in terms of security, both of us coming from a security background. And then we also get the opportunity to reinforce our proper operating procedures. And with us doing this, we're able to continuously build on that trust and become better and prove it. Now I've talked a lot about what Evelyn is and what she can do, but now we wanna show you. funny thing is we recorded the demo so we wouldn't have these issues so um, so what we're gonna do is once we get this going uh, we're gonna show you the the different scenarios of what we built and how and how it works if you have any questions at the end of it please uh, you know stick around we'll be outside if you we would love to, to answer any questions you have playing before. Okay, here we go. All right, so logging in is really easy. All you do is go to our RPM website in a browser, and you'll be prompted to enter in your credentials, an email and a username and a password that you've set up. And then you just hit login. You can also use a social login if you've signed up. And then, of course, if you forget your credentials, you can use forgot passwords or help. Now how this works. Well, those users provide the information that we need in order to create their accounts. We have a script that runs, and it automatically creates the profiles in Splunk and OneLogin. 
So when our users try to log in, hitting a search head, an auth end request is sent to one login. And that responds with the SAML assertion approving them, and it includes the profile of that specific user. That way it can dictate which of those reports and what data the user can see. Now, of course, health information. We want this to be secure, so we also offer the option of multi-factor authentication. This is something that we require for our health operations center staff, but we allow our physicians to set those rules for their own patients and their own users. So when you log in and you have multi-factor authentication set up, you have an extra step where you're asked to provide an OTP token. Once you provide that token, you're able to log in and the process is all the same. You're hitting the search head, your profile is shared, and it determines which views and reports you're able to see. So once you log in, you're taken to your dashboard. This is our physician dashboard where they triage the critical and at-risk readings. They can quickly see what other users may have reviewed those readings. And then they might want to drill down into a specific patient's profile. All they have to do is click on the patient's name. It'll take them to their specific profile where they can see the data that is only pertinent to that specific patient. If they don't want to leave this screen, they can also click on the category and parameter columns to bring up our detailed insights, which are just the trend charts of that specific patient's readings over time. And while they're doing that analysis, if they find that they want to leave a comment, they can click in the comments column. They type in whatever information they need to in the pop-up, they hit OK, the page will refresh, that comment is automatically date and time stamped and tagged that user for auditing purposes and made available on that reading for anyone else that has access to it. And when the user has finally felt like that reading has been handled, this patient is OK, they can hit review reading, scroll down to the bottom and hit submit. The page will refresh and you'll actually see that reading disappear from their dashboard because it's been triaged, but it is available in other areas, and then their count goes down. So these readings, they come in from all these various IoT devices, whether that's a blood pressure cuff, a heart rate monitor, a blood glucose device, a Google Watch, a weight scale, whatever it is we've integrated with. The important part of this is that inside this data, there's no linking it to a specific patient at this point. So when that data does come in, it has to be tagged to a patient and enriched. So we have that log, and now it's time to attach it to a patient. And we do that through our various data models and pivots and lookups. And then once that reading is actually tagged to a specific patient, we want to make sure that we provide as much context as possible for it, so that when our users are logging in, they're able to perform whatever analysis they need and provide those health outcomes for their patients. And we do that in the forms of the reports where our patients can actually perform actions. And we talked about being able to call your patient directly from Evelyn. So all you have to do is click in the phone number. A soft phone will appear. It'll automatically dial out to the patient. You can have that conversation the whole time it's recorded and transcribed. And then you can close it whenever you're done. Now those calls are aggregated by patient in one of our reports, and you can drill down into a specific patient and then select a specific call if you want after reviewing all of the calls placed to that patient. And once you click into a call, you can see the transcript and even replay it through the audio player in this report. And you would think that this might be kind of an intense integration, maybe a little bit hard to do, some extra steps, but it's really not. All that we require is that our users have an account and click on a phone number. And it'll make the calls and it does all the heavy lifting for you. So you click on the phone number in Splunk. It does all of the requests with one login for the single sign-on. And it directs you to Amazon Connect, which is a cloud-based, self-service, web portal contact center. It makes those calls and facilitates them through a soft phone. That way, our users can have the conversations that they need to with their patients, whether it's reminding them to take a reading or checking up after a critical reading has come in. The whole time, those calls are recorded and transcribed in a database and then sent back to Splunk and made available in those reports to our users. So our entire circle of care can always know what exactly has been going on with their patients. Now telemedicine. It's similar 
to Amazon Connect in a way, in terms of integration, but this was a feature that our physicians wanted. So all they have to do is go to the telemedicine option in our navigation bar and hit login. There will be a quick single sign-on through one login, and then they're brought directly to their Doxy portal. Our patients can similarly click on the telemedicine tab for theirs, and they're brought directly to their doctor's queue. So how does this one work? It's also pretty simple. Our users simply single sign-on through one login into their Doxy portal. And then it's made available so that they can have those face-to-face -face meetings with their patients without having to be physically present next to each other. They can also share the screen. So if a doctor wants to help educate their patient with where they're at in terms of health, they can show those trend charts. They can show how their blood pressure has been rising or falling over time. Now this report is our billing overview report and it serves two purposes. One is to quickly see adherence, so whether or not patients have taken readings, and two, in order to provide that manual output that our users would need in order to do the manual billing. So each of those circles is a day, and the darker they get, the more readings have happened in that day. We also have a pivot where you can see which patients specifically contributed to how dark that circle gets per day. And then you can export the CSV to get the specific line items that you would need in order to submit those reimbursement claims to Texas Medicaid. But that can be cumbersome. So we have our automatic billing, where the qualified readings are automatically generated and calculated. And it allows our users to go in and simply check or uncheck whatever readings they want to bill for. And once they're happy with that selection, they scroll down and they hit submit. At this point, an input file is generated. Other things will be added to it to make sure that it has all the information that we need in order to process it for billing. Now we also have an adherence report. This is what tracks specific adherence by patient over a dynamic time range. So our users can select whatever time range they want. They can look at the specific percentages and then call the patients directly from this report the same way that we saw earlier and offer that gentle reminder of, hey, please take a reading all in an effort to drive up adherence. So when our users are in that automatic billing report and they're making those selections, it's already pre-calculated on what is actually a qualified reading based on the Texas Medicaid rules, so they don't have to worry about that. So all they do is go through and say, I want to bill for this, I don't want to bill for that. Whatever determinations they make, they hit submit, that input file is generated. But there are a couple of other things that need to happen to it. We need to add in a few other data fields. Uh, we have the physician's NPI. This is specific to each physician and allows them to bill. The specific CPT code that they're trying to bill for. The date of service that they're performing these services. Um, quite a few different fields. And it, it all varies based on what specifically the patient needs. That input file is then converted into a specific format and sent off to Texas Medicaid for processing. And our physicians can log in and see that they've been paid. So those are just a few examples of what exactly Evelyn can do. And we're constantly growing. We're always listening to the feedback from our users and trying to make it better, to make their lives easier, and in return, provide better outcomes for the patients that we support. That's not to say that we haven't already had an impact. I'm happy to say we definitely have, but Steve is going to get into that. So uh, Shelby, she's, she's amazing. Shelby built all this. Can we get a round of applause for Shelby? So one of the things that, that you're, you're going to hear if you're in the healthcare industry is value-based care. And we see value-based care uh, a little bit differently than some people. A lot of people seem to think value-based care is something that doctors just have to do. Um, to us, what, what we see value-based care is that we're providing value to everybody that's, again, in the, the chain, I guess, of, of custody for health. So we provide value to the doctor by providing them a turnkey managed service. No different than cybersecurity or network operations center monitor. We go to a doctor and say, you can do telemonitoring. We're going to do it for you. All you have to do is sign up your patients that, that want to be on the program and we're going to do everything for you. We provide value to the patient because 
we're now connecting them 24 by 7, 365 to a, care, to a clinician. So if they take a reading at 3 a.m. and it is elevated and they're having a panic attack because they think they're having a heart attack, someone's going to phone them and we're going to be able to have a conversation with them. We're going to be able to get in touch with their PCP. We're going to keep them out of the emergency room, but we're, we're almost like a, a safety blanket for them. And that's where we find a lot of our patients like to be on our, on our platform. And last but not least, we provide value to the payer because we're collecting information on, we're providing information they've never had before on population health. We are the only company that, that has the data to the point where for the state of Texas, from, coast, from Texas coast to coast, we have the ability to provide information into hypertension, diabetes, and weight management for, for the patients that are on our platform. So what's the impact? Well, the impact is this. If you have a chronic illness, you're generally seeing your doctor one to four times per year. Generally, it's one. I know that I haven't been to a doctor in a very long time, but since I started this, I, I talk to them every day. But seeing your doctor four times a year, if you have hypertension or diabetes, and you're going in and saying, I don't feel good, they just do some spot te uh, tests, maybe send you for blood work, and then you're out the door. But what we're doing is we're providing a... a uh, a view 365 days into the into that patient's home. So how are they living when they're at home? Or do they have hypertension at home? There's a lot of people out there that have white coat white coat syndrome, meaning that when you go into the office, your your blood pressure is elevated. So your doctor actually never gets the right reading. So with our platform, because we can get these readings on a daily basis, we're creating trend, trend charts and we're giving a visibility into doctors that they've never had before. So what does this all mean? And what is telemonitoring action? What have we done? So I have a couple use cases uh, that we're going to talk about. I actually have three, and one's not in the presentation because it happened two days ago. But we had a patient that took a, a blood pressure reading. Her blood pressure was 220 over one, uh, 160, which it, for those of you that don't know what that number meant or means, because I didn't know what it means before I started this, you are going, you are going to have a heart attack or you're going to have a stroke. And so this patient, we already knew by, based on the information that we have in Evelyn, is that they, she has heart issues, she's already had a stroke, um, she's had bypass surgery, and, you know, and, 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 and. So when we, got the, when we got the alert, we called the patient. All of our clinicians are trained in behavioral health, and when we, when we contacted the patient, the patient was delirious. Didn't know what was going on, didn't want to do anything, didn't want any sort of help or anything along those lines. So we called the caregiver and, the, and their cardiologist. When we connected with the cardiologist, the cardiologist said, I want this patient in the, my office right now. So we worked with the caregiver. We got the patient into the, into the cardiologist. The cardiologist was able to administrate the drugs that she was supposed to, that she needed to take. Her blood pressure went down, and as she became more aware of the situation, she ended up thanking AccuHealth. But I want you to process this for a second. This lady took her blood pressure reading because she wasn't feeling good, but what happens if she had taken her blood pressure reading with a device that she got from Walgreens? she would have just had the data and then she would have went about her day and who knows what would have happened. Because she was connected to us, we were able to keep her out of the emergency room, we were able to make sure that she's healthy and we were able to just take care of her. So another, an, uh, another one which was, I think of my grandparents when, I, when, I, when, when, this, when this happened. So we had, we had an elderly man that took his blood pressure and his blood pressure was skyrocketed again. I, I don't know what it was, but it was very high, enough for us to call him. And when we were asking questions, are you feeling okay? His response was, I, my legs give out, I fell, I, I don't feel good, but I'm not going anywhere. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go to an ambulance. I don't want, uh, I'm just gonna wait here until my, my daughter comes home and uh, I'm not going anywhere unless it's my, my primary care f physician. So we got on the phone with the caregiver, we got on the phone with the doctor and we explained the situation. The caregiver was his daughter, left work obviously, picked him up, brought him to the doctor. The doctor was able to change his medications and you know, we have, he hasn't had this incident yet. But when this, this hit home for me because I, I thought about my grandparents. This guy fell, was injured. Who knows what, if, who knows what his, his mindset was at the time, but he didn't want to bother somebody. He, he, he didn't want to call his daughter because she was at work and he, he was going to just lay there on the couch until she came home. And who knows what would have happened. But because he was connected to us, we were able to go to the caregiver, and the caregiver obviously went home to take care of her father and, and brought him back, and everything's good. But this is an example of, of how connected health is, is saving people. 
And last but not least, this literally happened two days ago. And I, I wanted to get in the slide, but I couldn't. A patient took her blood glucose reading. It was 308. So for those who don't know diabetes, generally it shouldn't be that high. It should be around the 80 mark. Hers was 308. When we called in, the first thing we say is, hey, you got to take it again. Within the three minutes of the time when she took the reading to the time that she took the second reading, it was 408. So it went up. Now, at that point, that again is kidney failure, death, you know, everything, nothing good is coming of that. And she, when our clinicians was talking with her, we were saying, okay, what did you do? Like, are you, just triaging them, essentially. She said that she was taking, she took a pill from her other doctor that her primary care facility or physician didn't know about. She took a pill from, her, from that doctor that raises her blood glucose level. It raised it to a point where she was in life-threatening situation, and we were able to contact her PCP, get the PCP on the phone, explain to him the situation. He was able to prescribe more insulin to her uh, over the phone. She was able to take it, and within 15 minutes, we were able to lower her down to safe, safe levels, avoiding a healthcare, well, first, avoiding a hospitalization, but who knows what else would have happened. So if she wasn't connected to us, that woman wouldn't be here today. So it, tele, telehealth works and, you know, that, that type of thing. If, you know, if you have grandparents, you know, give them a phone call because uh, there's, they, uh, they really do believe that you're too busy to, to con contact, but, you know, they, they, they definitely would like the, the call. So what's the impact of some of our companies that we, that we work with? We work with, the, we work with an organization called Doctors at Your Service out of San Antonio. And so Doctors at Your Service, what they do is they send clinicians to the patient's homes. And it's an interesting business model. It, it's, it, patients need help so they can't get in. They send the doctor to the home. But before us, they would send patients to, doctors to the home as they kind of needed to along, like patient would call in and say, I'm not feeling good, they'd send a doctor. Or they would uh, be kind of on a prescribed point of view that say, okay, I gotta go at this week to talk to the, to the patient. But we'll enter telemonitoring. Now we have the ability, they have the ability to get their patient vitals every single, every single day. They have the ability to strategically send their clinicians to the patient's homes and gain revenue from, uh, from the fact that they do telemonitoring and at the uh, same time lower their costs because they're not, sending pa they're not sending doctors out to the physician's home for no reason. So what is the competitive landscape for telemonitoring? So we're against some pretty big people in the, in the marketplace, but based on our cyber experience and the base on the way that our business model is working, uh, you know, we're taking business away from, uh, away from some of these companies. And I, I wouldn't say we're putting a big dent in it, but we are, we are an up and coming player. But we offer a turnkey managed service to doctors. And the reason why doctors are switching to us is simple, our platform works. And the reason why our platform works is because we use Splunk hands down. So I got two more minutes and I'll kind of get through this quickly. So Splunk and telehealth, uh, by the numbers, AccuHealth has grown. When we started this, in, when actually, funny enough, when we put in the call for papers, we didn't think we were going to be accepted. But we had about 100 patients when we, when we put in the call for papers for this, for this talk. In February, we had 23 patients. Today, we have 2,000. So we are growing at a, at a monstrous rate. And it's because we, can, we do stuff so efficiently and effectively based on our ability to deploy large-scale projects from, the cyber, from our experience from cybers. We have 120 doctors that are working with us. We have patients in three different countries, actually four. We have uh, Canada, United States, Mexico, and Trinidad and Tobago. And we're expanding into multiple states. We won uh, 2019 Telehealth Platform of the Year. And the reason why doctors, I, I, I said the reason why doctors are switching to us is because it's easy. We take any thought process out of it. We let doctors be doctors. They get all the data they need to be, they, they need, and they earn more revenue. So what's next for us? So we're actually launching uh, a telehealth platform for, for pets. So we're, we're calling it uh, Willow, so drwillow.com. And we're the first of its kind. Reason being is that when you bring your dog or cat or animal to a vet, a vet clinic, and I'm sure most of you experience this, it's, it's not a good experience for them. So why can't, you, why can't you monitor your pet from home? Why can't you get the, the vitals that your veterinarian needs to be able to say, hey, I need, to, I need you to bring the, the animal in? So with telemedicine and following the same concepts, we've launched, we've launched Willow, and we've 
I'm not going to say that we have patience on it yet, but we do have a lot of more traction of, of veterinarians starting to come to us because, again, we're providing them the ability to provide better services to their patients. Uh, so from a market or strategy point of view for us, what we want to do is we want to ingest everything. One of, one of the things I want to get into and I'm passionate about is I want to get into uh, Parkinson's. Reason being is that if you have Parkinson's right now, they have monitoring technology that you have to wear for nine months and it only records 30 days worth of data. And then you go see your neurologist and they don't really know where, the, where your issues are coming from. So I want to get into the, we want to get into the point where we can start ingesting this data and providing a new insight for neurologists that are starting to fight this disease. Uh, we want to integrate more with, uh, with more devices. We want to, uh, we want to move into more new territories and we're actively, actively uh, moving into Florida. So it's flashing now that I'm out of time. But uh, with that said, does anybody have any questions or anything along those lines? You, you could also take a view from the doctor's point of view, right? If you look at the doctor, right? How successful is this doctor in improving the, 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 the life of his patient, so to speak? Yeah. So you could offer this to doctors to say, look, you know, I mean, um, this is your track record. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they can think about different ways of treatment to yeah. be more successful. You can compare different doctors on how successful they are in yeah. treating patients. So that, that's a, that is an actual selling point that we use. So it's called macro and MIPS. So there is a, there is a, uh, a code out there or, uh, pardon me? Score. Yeah, a score. It's a risk score that doctors have to follow. And by us having the ability to monitor hypertensive patients and diabetic patients, and because we can integrate with the EMR, that the automatic calculations happen in their EMR so they can comply better with their macro and MIPS. They're therefore earning more revenue, but also being able to go back to Medicare and Medicaid and saying, we are improving the lives of our patients. So we are 100% doing that. And it's something that we didn't really touch on, but yeah, it is. In, in the value overview, that, that's a point that yeah. I was thinking it's obvious, but it, it yeah. was not on the slide. So. It's sometimes difficult to convince doctors of that, though. But it's, uh, you know, once our biggest challenge is when we're working with doctors is telling them, hey, this works. Right, and then they're just kind of like, eh, well, you know, I don't know, I don't really have control over it anymore. But then once every doctor that we have on the platform, every time they see the value, it's, they get it. And it's just like, it's a, a light goes off and it's like, how did I do this before telemonitoring? So we, that's the reason why we're growing with doctors. We have 120 doctors plus that we're working with. And it's because they, they get that one patient and that one patient is generally, they give us their, their most critical patients and we keep those patients in their care rather than going to the hospital. And it's just like, I get it. Okay, I want all my patients on this platform because it's going to help. So uh, it really depends on the doctor. Uh, and that's a, that's a, that is a good question. But Un, no different than a, than a security operations center, we have a run book. So we, when we onboard a clinic, we, we create a run book. And in case of emergency, we know exactly the numbers to, to call. So we have a lot of doctors that at first they say, just call my on-call service, you know, I don't really want to be bothered. But once they realize that they're not, it's not the volume that they anticipate, they give us their, their cell phone and they say, text me. And so we text them and then we get them on the phone call. Um, Again, going back to their, their being able to, their scoring, they want to keep hypertensive and diabetic patients in their care because they generate more revenue from having a, a better score at that. So they're more, I, I guess they're, they're compensated in a way to care and it, that's, that's how we do it. But it's, it, it's a, we, have to prove, we have to prove to them. So we start really with their middle level. So they're, we're generally working with a PA and then from there we, we generally go directly to the doctor. Oh, yes. 
So that's the biggest issue with telemonitoring. So how we bridge that gap is that we pair technology with the patient that we have. I'm not going to give a, a I'm not going to give my grandmother, and again, I, we built a lot of these concepts of how do I get my grandmother on this. We bridge that gap by giving them blood pressure devices that, or blood, uh, blood glucose devices or whatever that's SIM enabled. So they step on a weight scale, they get off, and they don't even know that that data is being sent to us. It's magic. So we, as a, we pay for those, those data SIM cards that are enabled in those devices. We've tried to deploy Bluetooth devices to elderly patients, and it just doesn't work. But uh, true story, we have a 102-year-old woman that's on our platform, and she tests every single day because doctor tells her to. So that's how we bridge the gap is we, we take any sort of thinking out of it. It's just, hey, all you got to do is take this reading. This is how you do it, and then they do it. And we also, we also play bingo. So what that means is every single day we pick a bingo number and if a patient takes a reading and they get that number then they can win rewards so we gamify it in a way so when we started that bingo program our adherence went up tremendously because they were able to now it's like i'm i'm taking my reading because i want to win bingo and that was a that was a really big thing for us as well any any other questions Mm-hmm. And it can seem to be to shift it's like a revenue negative revenue impact to a hospital because there's less ER visits. Is there a benefit to the hospital side of it? So it depends on what state. If you're in Maryland, absolutely. The hospitals are are compensated based on keeping patients out of the emergency room. And that trend is gonna happen throughout the United States. But the patients that we're keeping out of the emergency room are patients that hospitals don't really want to see. Does that make sense? Because 98% of the issues that we are treating can be dealt with at the PCP and, and specialty level, right? If someone's having a cardiac arrest, 100%, you got to go to the emergency room. You're not going to your specialty doctor. But if someone's having a panic attack, you don't need to go to the emergency room. And most of the time when people have chest pains, it's, they think they're having a heart attack, they take their blood pressure reading, their blood pressure is elevated, then they take it again, it's elevated again and again and again until they, they're like, I'm just going to the hospital. And then the hospital brings them in and then the hospital might give them some medication or then they're gonna run all these tests on them. What they, uh, essentially, the patients that we take care of, we're just, it's not a massive line item for the hospitals anyway. But that's a great question. I also think we're out of time. <laughs> if you guys have any other questions, we can take them out in the hall. Thanks. <laughs>